This video is how this becomes this. So I wanted to get better at the perspective drawing. Problem is, I know nothing about perspective. Do you know something about anything? Nope. But I know that perspective is a technique. A technique to create the linear illusion of depth. <gasps> no, not depth. Depth. You know, as objects get further away from the viewer, they appear to decrease in size. So because linear perspective was developed during the Renaissance, who else better to study it from other than Leonardo da Vinci himself? Do you think he was named after the leader of the Ninja Turtles? Wow, your parents must be so proud. I know, right? Because my first name is also Leonardo. What does that even mean? I learned that Da Vinci didn't invent linear perspective, but he studied its essential tools. The horizon line, vanishing points, and parallel lines. The horizon line represents the eye level of the viewer. If placed higher, it will give the impression of looking down on the scenery, like a flying bird point of view, pooping on the people below. If placed lower, it will give the impression of looking up at the scenery, like Poco's point of view. Give it to me. The vanishing point is where all parallel lines converge, and is always on the horizon line in its most basic types. In The Last Supper, for example, all the parallel lines converge into Christ's right eye, right at the center. The same happens in the Annunciation, right here. Some people even defend that the Mona Lisa was never meant to be viewed front on, but rather from left of center, all because of how the horizon line and vanishing point are positioned. So I grabbed a ruler I didn't use since the third grade, and I started drawing boxes from that same type of one-point perspective as Leonardo. I placed the horizon lines at different heights and single vanishing points all around to study how the conversions affected the boxes. But after a few days, I had to dive deeper into Leonardo's work if I wanted to draw more than boxes. Like the way that he most likely divided planes in perspective. On a rectangle, Da Vinci would connect the opposite corners with diagonals, what made him find the center point. Then one can now draw a horizon line that crosses through that center point, and a vertical line as well. And it's done. The same can be done within the subdivisions, even in perspective. Another technique he probably used was duplicating. Since the height of the rectangle will stay the same, I can just extend the bottom and upper lines. Then I repeat the process of dividing the plane and finding that center point. Then I draw a line from the far corner of the rectangle through the halfway point until it meets the extended line. Now I just draw a vertical and the plane has been cloned. In perspective, see, the duplicated plane will seem smaller because of its converging to the distance. With these techniques at hand, it was time for something more complex. At first I got super confused with all the construction lines, but eventually I started visualizing some of the matrix behind it. And then got to this result. I had a hard time drawing the roof of these windows, and the stairs seemed off to me. Also, every time I got to circular shapes, I just didn't really know how to make them feel right. Don't get me wrong, I was glad with my little renaissance house, but I wanted to go deeper and try again, that's what she said. So I discovered that inclined planes also converge to a vanishing point, vertically aligned with that first one, like me drawing the top of this open box right here. Even if you are drawing from a one-point perspective? Yep, it's still called one-point perspective. That's just false advertisement. As for circular shapes, the secret is in knowing how to draw ellipses. So to do that, I draw a square and I apply the division technique I mentioned before. Then I divide each side into 10 sections. These corners will mark the path the ellipse is gonna make. Also, the ellipse is tangent with each of the four sides of the square. And now, finally, I had decided to try drawing a street with multiple buildings using everything I've learned, and this time taking into account that every building is converging to its own single vanishing point, dividing and duplicating to keep things in the right place, and now I know how to draw those curved windows and doors and inclined planes in perspective. And this was what I came up with. Looks good. Oh, thanks, girl. For a loser like you. There you go. Maybe I should do another episode with more vanishing points in the future. What do you think? I think you should follow your stupid heart. I might not be an artist like my man Leo, but still, this did surprise me. That's it for today, guys. Comment, like, and subscribe for more videos like this, or else Poco knows where you live. I do.